This study on nearly half a million people has bad news for keto diet. Our diet can play a major role in our well-being and longevity. So it is no surprise that researchers are analyzing the eating habits of people around the world. Well, Dr. Steidelman recently released an expansive study about almost half a million people with their diets, and what it revealed is not good news for keto fans. What they discovered, and this should come as no surprise, is that regardless of whether you live or what your daily diet is like, banning entire food groups and thinking you can cheat your way into good health may work for a while, but it may also send you to your grave too soon. The popular ketogenic diet, which involves strictly limiting carbs to less than 20 grams per day, which is about a small apple at tops, focusing primarily on high-fat foods, is one of those restrictive diets that may have long-term negative consequences. Other low-carb weight loss diets in this category include paleo diet, Atkins diet, Ducan diet, and you name it. Some of the advantages of going keto are difficult to deny, right? A high-fat, low-carb diet can be an effective strategy for quick weight loss and blood sugar control. That's true. The keto diet may also be beneficial for children who have difficult to control epileptic seizures. People have seen excellent results managing those conditions on a keto diet with the assistance and guidance of professionals for decades. However, there is some evidence that going low carb may cause people to become less glucose tolerant and develop diabetes. Meaning, if you let your body forget how to deal with carbs, your body will not know what to do when exposed to carbs again. Just like your muscles, you should not be working out hours and hours every day, but rather maybe 30 minutes a day or one to two hours every other day and so forth so that your body knows how to deal with stress and be prepared. That is the whole point of working out, right? So if you never eat carbs, your pancreas will atrophy and your body will lose its glucose receptors to suck the glucose in when you're not exposed to any carb at all. Now, scientists have uncovered some beneficial dietary hints from this wide-reaching research. Fill your plate with plants to get important nutrients, including veggies, some grains, not too much, healthy fats and legumes, as opposed to highly processed large amounts of meat and dairy products. That is the bottom line in this research. Eating wisely may be one key we need to unlock long lives of full of health. Based on carefully conducted laboratory testing of overweight men, we know that going keto does not help burn more body fat than a regular diet. Instead, it forces people to drastically reduce their sugar intake Remember, sugar is carbohydrate, the same thing, and it forces them to eliminate processed foods and junk food. Both of these are good habits for overall health and blood sugar levels, and they can help lower your risk of developing cancer, but doesn't mean that you should avoid all the good carbs. Just because you have to avoid carbs, you know, that you cannot just pass on the good carbs that your body needs. However, Eating a special high-fat, low-carb diet, like taking aspirin, should probably not be an everyday habit for otherwise healthy people, right? So some people need to take aspirin, but not everybody. It may be harmful for some people, right? So unless we are literally starving, our bodies aren't designed to run on fat. So some people claim the opposite, but normally our body is designed to run on glucose. That's why 
When you eat fat, your body converts that to glucose. The, the fat does not just get burned automatically. You, you have to have glucose levels maintained. If the glucose was not necessary, you wouldn't have to worry about something called blood sugar at all. So your blood sugar has to stay at a minimum of 70 to 90 to survive. So those people who say that the glucose is not essential is absolutely incorrect. Otherwise, when we drove your blood, your blood glucose would be zero if you didn't need it, right? But when you're on keto, your body still makes glucose. Finally, low-carb diets make it easy to overlook important nutrients such as magnesium, calcium, potassium, which can be abundant on less restrictive diets that include fresh, healthy carbs such as beans, bananas, and oats. More research indicates that people who consume whole foods, nutrient-dense foods, live the longest and have a lower risk of cancer. So more research was presented at the European Society of Cardiology recently, and the researchers who presented at that conference examined the self-reported eating habits of nearly 25,000 people in the United States and compared their findings to studies involving over that other study that we just talked about, the 500,000 people. They discovered that those who consumed a moderate amount of carbohydrates, moderate, okay, not too much, moderate amount of carbohydrates lived longer than either low carb or high carb eaters. So you don't want to be a no carb guy or full carb guy. You want to be like a moderate amount of healthy carb type of guy, okay? Their study suggests that in the long run, low carb diets are associated with an increased risk of death from any cause. That means that, yeah, you may not die from diabetes, but you may die from, you know, cardiovascular disease or cancer, as well as deaths from not mostly strokes and heart attacks. So another study published recently found that people with lower nutritional quality diets like fewer fresh vegetables and legumes and nuts we are more likely to develop some of the most common and deadly cancers including colon cancer stomach cancer lung cancer liver breast and all that essentially we are learning that there are no shortcuts to healthy living okay calculating the exact type of diet that leads to a long life can be difficult. Part of the problem is that, thankfully, we do not live our lives in highly controlled laboratory conditions, right? Until that terrifying day arrives and we all become well-studied lab rats, we must rely on long-term observational data, usually in the form of surveys, to learn more about which diets are the best long-term planned diets. But survey data from around the world has shown that people who eat less meat and dairy and less processed foods while eating more fiber-rich plant-based foods like vegetables and nuts and some of the whole grains, even carb-heavy beans, have some of the best health outcomes. Their diets typically are in basically in whole foods. They are not processed, right? So that's the whole thing about living a long life. It's not about eating this or that. It's about avoiding the processed foods. So uh, these people in their studies, for example, who lived a long life, they would eat, for example, whole grain rice instead of white rice. They would eat plants like fruits and vegetables rather than more processed versions, like instead of drinking fruit juice or smoothies, uh, they would go for the the whole foods, uh, the real foods and vegetables. And you will have that intact fiber with a lot of nutrients. So fiber isn't just good for keeping your gut moving, but scientists say that feeding with fiber, you know, when they feed the mice with fiber, they discover that the carbs, which aren't absorbed by the body, it really can help you from aging and from the damaging chemicals associated with Alzheimer's disease and it reduced the inflammation in your gut. The researchers were confident that the health benefits of eating more fiber extend to humans as well, 
because they couldn't really find a lot of guinea pig human beings, so they did the studies in, in rats, right? So however, sticking to a plant-based diet high in fiber can be difficult on a low-carb diet because, you know, especially if you have diabetes, some of the high-fiber foods are like beans and peas and sweet fruits and so forth. They're high in carbs. So it's not a common pattern to eat very low-carb, strictly plant-based, at least not in the Western world where, you know, everybody wants to eat meat every day. Just the way it is, right? But people on low-carb diet frequently eat more butter and meat, which can raise not only blood pressure, but also uh, eating a lot of processed meats contribute to cancer as well. So meat and dairy can cause inflammation in our body as well, which can help in the formation and growth of these cancerous cells. The new scientific findings all support what parents, trainers, and coaches have been saying for years, eat less junk and remain skeptical of the latest miracle diet, whether keto or any other passing bad. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please give a thumbs up, share and like, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.